are hard to fill. And uh, that's been part of the circumstance, and that's one of the difficult things about losing loved ones. I remember with Carissa, it's just the change that it brings into your life when you know, they're just no longer there, so you don't have any use for their clothes, you don't have any use for the bassinet, just things you have to adjust. And so to think about giving thanks in, that, in those instances... I know for some that have attended, you know, this um, congregation, been a part of our assembly, some for years, for, for many years. It afforded an opportunity for, for them to disappear and uh, fall off the radar screen entirely. I hope they're going somewhere. I hope they, you know, haven't totally, you know, gotten away from the, the life of the church. I've even seen how it's even kind of hit the core of the church in the, in the leadership and how it ended up in some ways fracturing and splintering some things there, which, you know, hasn't been a, you know, an easy pill to swallow. And uh, anything to give thanks about? <laughs> you know, what, what, do you, what do you give thanks about? Think about how the circumstances have changed in our country and just how much, you know, to me, how much lawlessness that we, we see, to me, uncharacteristic of our country and the depravity that has to be behind, you know, so much of what we see being, you know, played out. I mean, hardly a commercial anymore can be watched without being inundated with just godless messages. Um, and I'm not even going to try to illustrate some of them because I don't, think it'd be, I don't even think it'd be, be appropriate. And, uh, and so it just reminds you know, me of how easily the circumstances can change, how you can go from singing, as the carpenters did, I'm on the top of the world looking down on creation, and the only explanation I can find is the love that I've found ever since you've been around. Your love has put me on the top of the world. To the next thing you know, you feel like the world's on top of you. And you feel like you're going to almost be crushed underneath the, the weight of everything that's going on, your enthusiasm for life. It made me think about Job, how quickly things can turn around to, to go from having so much plenty to all of a sudden see it just little by little being stripped away and your children, you know, your whole household just in one swoop, you know, uh, you know they're, 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 not, they're not there anymore. And then next thing you know, you've got <laughs> sores from the soles of your feet to the, to the crown of your head, Scripture, Scripture says. Give thanks in all circumstances. Your wife's telling you to curse God and die. But he would say, shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. Which is harder, do you think? Which is harder, to give thanks in all circumstances when all your circumstances are favorable? Is that the hardest time to give thanks or is it... Harder to give thanks when circumstances, you know, seem to be adverse and there seems to be so much adversity and it seems like, you know, and I thought, you know, it seems kind of obvious that we'd have to say maybe when circumstances are adverse, that's got to be the time when it's harder. But, you know, sometimes I think it can be just as easy to miss out on giving thanks when circumstances are all favorable because how much, you know, do we take for granted? I mean, we just kind of expect it, don't we? Just kind of get up and go, and I know things are going to take off, and I'm going to keep being able just to inhale and, and exhale and get around. Only one of those lepers out of the ten you know, went back and told Jesus, thank you. So how could God command us to give thanks in all circumstances?
think it's going to be something that we're going to have to um, perhaps even demand ourselves to do. It's probably going to have to be something that we have to force ourselves to do in all circumstances because we do know that they change. And I think we can do that because every circumstance, there's going to be something in that situation that we can be thankful for. Whatever our condition is, whatever our circumstance is, if we can begin to train, you know, our eyes to see and our ears to hear, you know, there's going to be plenty of things that we can be thankful for and give God the glory about. Just to know that His presence is always going to be constant for us. That I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. How grateful should we be, no matter what our situation is or circumstance, to know that, you know, I'm not going to be going through, you know, through this alone. And then I remember waking up, you know, it's been 17 years now in the hospital trying to figure out where in the world am I? And we're finally registered, you know, what, you know, where am I? You know, and why am I here? What is, what is going on? Didn't underst understand, but it was so, you know... I, mean, I just remember it was dark. No, no, any, and, 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 uh, but I remember just being able to call out to God and just to talk to Him and just to know that I was being heard and that whatever was going on, uh, He was going to see me through. His providential protection and provision. I don't know how many times in that, and I've talked about how, boy, if God wanted to sink me, He could sink me. If He wanted to sink us, He could sink us in a heartbeat. But how many times it seems to be that things kind of pace themselves, spread themselves out to where, you know, sometimes you wonder, you look back, how did we ever make it? How did we ever be able to make ends meet? And, but, you know, it happened. It worked out. And now you can see how you can just give thanks to God and, and give Him the glory for the way He's uh, provided for us. How He's been sometimes even a shield. You know, sometimes I think about how many things that I have not experienced, how many things I have not had to go through to uh, give God, you know, gratitude for. Because I, you know, it, could be, it, could be, it could be way worse. You know, really, really could. And think about as God's children, that no matter what my circumstance is in life and no matter what my uh, condition is, I mean, I was reading about Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger and just, you know, what he's been able to afford because of his career and, and, and the kind of lifestyle that he's able to lead and, and everything, you know, just not... not Expecting it to happen. $1,000 suits, $500 shoes, my own personal jet, unless Annette's squirreling some away that I don't know about. It's, uh, you know, it's not going to happen. But yet I know that as a child of God, God doesn't want, to, want me to ever forget the inheritance that I have, that I have now. And to never forget, whatever my condition is, Whatever my lot in life might be at any given time, I, I am always rich in, in the sense that I belong to God. He's my Father, and He has an inheritance for me that He's preparing. And I just wanted to share real quickly with you, just listen, how does this make you feel? As you hear, Peter, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, 
may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you still believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. No matter what our circumstance may ever be at any given time, condition we're dealing with, we can always give thanks to God because I know I'm saved. I am saved. And God wants us to be able to confidently say that at any time, at any place, to anyone who would want a challenge. I know in whom I have believed. And I'm convinced. And so I just kind of tonight wanted to put in a plug because I know how quickly, and again, I know I, I talk about my mother-in-law oftentimes, you know, as far as circumstances and all circumstances. And maybe she did. I don't know if you can remember Annette, um, Isaac, Simeon. You know, we moved Bill and Blanche in when the brain tumor came on and the ALS sat in. And, uh, but I do not remember a single time when your mom ever complained. And it wasn't easy for her to uh, get around to things. And, uh, and for her, you know, just to find the place where she could give thanks. And I know she made every effort right up to, the, I remember the last Sunday before she breathed her last that following week. I remember how hot it was in here. I think the air conditioner broke down. It was, it was not, not comfortable at all. Sid, it was your fault, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> it's a thing where she was, we were sweating. She was, and I remember just seeing, I, I was almost kind of a little concerned she might just kind of, you know, keel over right then and there. It was, I mean, it was Roundup Sunday, if there was something like that. I think we're all, that was all going on. She, did, she, she died the following week. And even though she could not sing the way she wanted to, you know, I've heard, you shared this before, you know, just to be able to come in and try to, 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 to mouth it out and everything, you know, she, she wanted to give... Well, in, in that circumstance and in a situation like that, what do, you get, what do you have to give thanks for? What would motivate you and what would move you? She has blessed the church. Absent from the body. <laughs> present with the Lord. I want to thank you all. I know it's been a difficult stretch, but tonight I want to thank you for writing it out with the church. I know it has not been easy, and I know it would have been just as easy for many of you, and, and I know some of you probably had justifiable reasons to, uh, to want to take a, take a hiatus and, and maybe look for other pastors, but I personally want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, for hanging in there through this. It's been a difficult stretch. I don't know that it's going to get any easier, but I want to be the, the kind of church that in all circumstances we give thanks because we know uh, to whom you know, we all belong. So thank you for all that you do to help make the church function in affording me the opportunity to be able to try to be in the Word and come and mine it and come and share. This is what I'm learning and passing on to you so that hopefully we can all be strengthened in our, in our faith with, uh, in our walk with the Lord. I hope you have a wonderful uh, week here and uh, a happy Thanksgiving time. I hope that you all are safe and kept well. And uh, I'm going to offer a, a word of a closing prayer after which uh, we'll be dismissed. I'm glad you all could be here tonight. Dear God, uh, we want to be a grateful people. I pray, Father, that um, no matter what we experience in this life, that we will always recognize the fact that we are your children, that we belong to you. Thank you for being so patient with us and for striving with us. And Thank you again for treating us way better than our sin deserves. And I pray, Father, that we'll all be faithful to the end. And one day, we'll just see how uh, glorious that will be. 
And uh, be with us now as we go our individual ways. And we pray, uh, pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.